so here the other type of uh, architecture is a peer to peer network in which uh, both computers or nodes have the same rights uh, and it only depends that who is requesting and who is providing service. For example, if this node A is requesting, then he will automatically become the client and uh, node B will become the server. Uh, in the next clock pulse, maybe there is possibility that node B is requesting and node A is providing the service. So in that case, node A will become the server and node B will become the client. So this is actually interchangeable relationship between both nodes and it depends that who is providing service to which node. So now moving next uh, toward the wireless uh, local area network 802.11 that provide connectivity in this mobile uh, environment. And here you can see that we have the same architecture, but before that we have the hub and the switch or the router that providing connectivity of uh, these uh, base station are uh, BSS1 and BSS2 to the internet. So here the access point actually provide access uh, to the main host or provide access to the main component that is a router uh, in this case. And then the router further provide accessibility to the internet. So the access point, which is the base station, uh, that provide connectivity to all these nodes in this uh, basic service set, BSS1 and uh, BSS2, where four nodes are connected with this access point and uh, their data is forwarded or routed through this router, which are hub to the internet. Uh, now, uh, all those nodes which are provided in the range or the zone of uh, this access point will get uh, service. Uh, this access point here uh, provide uh, services to these nodes. That's why this access point is a server here uh, in this coverage area, BSS2. While here, this access point one is providing services in BSS1 coverage area. So that's why uh, it become a server or a master in this uh, zone. And uh, they are actually identified uh, by the network name that is called SSID. That is the service set identifier. Uh, and uh, each, each access point will have their unique SSID. Now here you can see the difference between uh, these nodes, the, the difference between node one that is a single hop and the other node that is node number two. So here you can see the difference between these infrastructure based and infrastructure less uh, network uh, in perspective of a single hop and multi hop. Now in single hop actually the base station provide connectivity to the large wired network that include Wi-Fi, LAN and cellular telephony, or maybe there is uh, any other type of uh, uh, connectivity option that is available. Uh, while in a multi-hop, you can see that the base station exists, but some nodes must relay to other nodes, and these are actually the forwarding nodes, are the medi mediator point, or you can say the relay, uh, the relay points. While in infrastructure list, there is no wired network, one node coordinate the transmission of other nodes and the underlying technology available can be the Bluetooth and ad hoc networks. While in multi-hop, again, the same thing, no base station exists and some node must relay through others and the mobile ad hoc networks 
are the vehicular ad hoc network are actually the example of this network. Uh, here are some uh, important issues related to these wireless link uh, that how the strength of uh, these, wi uh, these wireless signals or wireless link can be affected. Here you can see that uh, decreasing signal strength based on the surrounding environment is one of the important factor. Uh, for example, if you are, uh, are on the top of uh, these building given here in this diagram, then it will be easy for you to communicate. So disperse uh, as it travels greater distance, and this is actually called the attenuation, that how long uh, a distance can travel. It innovates as it passes through matter as well. And this is actually a weakness of a signal. You can, I can explain it here that attenuation, attenuation is actually weakness of a signal. And for that purpose, you will need a repeater to regenerate uh, the main purpose of uh, this uh, repeater is to regenerate these signals. So the attenuation can cause weakness of uh, these signals and then onward you need to regenerate this signal again. Uh, and similarly, the, for example, if there are uh, more hurdles uh, are such uh, items that can disrupt the signal by itself and the signal may take multiple paths to get the destination node, then it can also uh, increase the bit error rate uh, in the signal. Another important thing is the interference with other signal. For example, uh, you are working in an environment uh, where some other signals are also uh, present or exist in that area for example, if you are working uh, near to airport, you are working in an in industrial area, or you are working uh, uh, with the highways where high or more traffic exists, then uh, it can create some hurdles or high bit rate, uh, error rate uh, in your signals. So here, radio sources in same frequency band, for example, 2.4 gigahertz wireless phone interfere with the 802.11 wireless band. And similarly, the electromagnetic noise signal, for example, the microwave oven can also uh, uh, create high bit error rate uh, in your signal. And he here in this diagram, you can see that the microwave uh, by itself uh, creates some noise and that can increase the uh, interference with the communication signal, uh, which can cause the disruption of your signal and may, in, uh, and may be a reason for high bit and error rate. Uh, another important thing here is the multi-path propagation, as I discussed earlier on the last slide, that you are receiving signal from uh, multiple direction and these signals uh, after reflection may uh, create some hurdles when they reach the destination node. Uh, so electromagnetic waves reflect off object and they are taking many paths of uh, different lengths and causing uh, blurring of signal at the receiver as well. Here, this is the transmitter tower and you can see that he, this tower is sending signal to the receiver and the same signal is reaching out to the receiver or destination node through multipath. And that can, this multipath propagation sometime increase the high bit error rate. Uh, and sometime there is possibility of collision uh, at the receiving end or at the receiver antennas. Uh, so important thing to deal with the, these bit errors in a wireless versus wired network. In wired network, you can uh, see that uh, most loss is due to congestion. Uh, the wired media is actually much more secure as compared to wireless media. Uh, and uh, everything is already uh, guided through the link to find the destination node. 
there is possibility of some congestion on some centralized point like uh, router, like switch, like server, where a possibility of collision is, and then there may be the loss of uh, data or creation of bit errors. While in wireless network, the signal is much more exposed as compared to wired link, and therefore there is possibility of high bit rate in wireless signal. Uh, the sender could increase transmission power uh, while you are dealing with high bit rate, uh, but it will uh, simply uh, require more energy, and that can be dangerous for the, uh, the network and the node life. It can also create more interference with other senders as well, uh, and similarly, we should also have some stronger error detection and recovery mechanism uh, that can help us while uh, you receive data at the receiver end, and uh, then onward, you should be able to completely uh, control it. Now, let me explain it uh, a little bit here uh, about the first thing that is uh, the transmission rate. So for example, if you are here, to see the, the transmission rate, then uh, we have much more uh, power consumption, or you can say the energy consumption, the power consumption. In nodes, uh, the first, event or activity which consume much more uh, uh, power is the mobility of a node. When a node is mobile, mobility of a node consume more power. After that, the transmission range. So as much you increase the transmission range, the energy consumption will be high. This upward arrow means that consumption will be high. Then after that is the, the reception of data, that is Rx, and then onward is the processing. Now you can say the computation of data. the processing and the computation of data. So that's why he's saying that uh, if you are going to increase the transmission rate, then automatically it will increase the battery power and uh, the host will exhaust or will dead automatically. And similarly, we have some uh, error detection techniques. Normally we use the CRC for error detection uh, we also use the, the cyclic redundancy check. We use the checksum. And uh, we also use uh, the parity bit for error detection and prevention. Uh, so in that perspective, we need uh, much more stronger techniques that can help us. Uh, if we received any data with certain error, then we should be able uh, to uh, to retrieve that data uh, from the, those errors. Uh, uh, remember, once we receive data uh, between sender and receiver, there are uh, two types uh, of reception. This is the sender, and here is the receiver. So actually, sender send data to the receiver, and uh, data is received the first thing data received with error our data received without errors so if it's without error, it means you can process this data. But if data is received with error, then you have to check that either 
you would be able to address those errors and the data received is recoverable or not. If it is recoverable, then it means you will recover data, recover this data without error. And now you can process this data as well. For example, if this data is unrecoverable, then what will happen? Then you have to go for retransmission of this data. So if you have, for example, if you have less number of packets, for example, if you have one to 10 packets, you can afford retransmission. But if you have, for example, 20,000 packets, then this is a very time consuming as well as energy consuming job. So you will definitely avoid the retransmission in this situation or in this case when you have more data. Uh, another important thing uh, that is the broadcast limitation. In wide broadcast link, as we already discussed that uh, in wide, we have guided media. So we can have uh, different route that is already guided toward the desired destination. So all nodes will receive the transmission from all other nodes and we can have different type of uh, uh, media available for that purpose. Uh, but in, BD, uh, in wi wireless broadcast, we are facing different issues. Uh, Sometimes there may be uh, unseen hurdles that can prevent our information uh, from the dissemination and toward the desired destination. For example, here in this diagram, you can see that we have node A, B, and C. Uh, here, A and B can hear each other. So look at this, A and B can hear each other. Similarly, B and C can hear each other. But A and C can't hear each other because of uh, this hurdle. And there is a mountain, or you can say there is a building or, or something through which this uh, signal may not pass. So the penetration power of this signal is not that much that it can pass through this hurdle, or this building, or this mountain. So therefore, A and C are receiving data indirectly through node B, but not directly. So A and C are unaware of their interference at B, or sometimes there is possibility that A send data to B and C send data to B. And the signal of uh, both are the packet from both A and C collide at node B. So neither C will receive anything, nor A will receive anything, and nor B will receive anything. So therefore, A and C are actually unaware uh, from the interference at node B. And uh, you can see here in this diagram, which is explained much more, that A signal sent over here, and they actually uh, collide here at node B, and this collision actually destroys the data or packet. And as uh, gradually you move toward this direction, then the signal strength is at the weakest point uh, over here when it reaches node C. And same is the case with the C signal. When it approaches to node A, it collides at node B, uh, which may destroy the available information. And then gradually it goes down uh, and uh, weeks uh, as going on. Here you can uh, see the ranges of different uh, wireless technologies in data network. Uh, for example, we have indoor and uh, for different types of protocol 802.11, N, A, B, and 15.1 uh, that is mostly used uh, for personal area network. Their ranges are given over here. And similarly for outdoor, uh, that is again uh, mentioned here that it can be up to 50 kilometer to 20, uh, 50 meter to 20 kilometer. While in uh, cellular network, we have more ranges and more uh, bandwidth available and uh, it, it becomes much more uh, uh, good 
uh, as compared to uh, other or older technology in 4G and uh, 5G networks. So channel and the association of these nodes uh, with one another, multiple channels uh, can work with different frequency and then it is the responsibility of the uh, network administrator that which frequency actually they choose for which access point. Uh, interference may be possible and that's why that we uh, try our best to provide different frequency to the adjacent or neighboring access point. Uh, so you can uh, use the same frequency uh, at, at the alternative uh, level or BSS, that is uh, the base service set uh, at different BSS, but they should not be adjacent or uh, in the neighborhood of that access point. Uh, similarly, the access point can also share information with one another. These are the periodic beacon through which uh, they inform their neighboring nodes about their existence and about their services. Uh, uh, containing access, uh, access point uh, name, that is SSID and MAC address, once they share the beacon node. Similarly, they can also have the scanning for the channel and uh, listening for the beacon nodes. You can see here uh, in this diagram that this node is requesting to this access point for connectivity. And this node is requesting uh, this uh, node or this access point is requesting this node to connect to this access point. So this also uh, helps the host to select any access point based on uh, their association. Uh, so look at this, we, we receive requests from access point as well as the node by itself can search for the required access point. Uh, normally, if you can see in the Windows environment or in our laptop or mobile phones, now once we turn on the, uh, the, the access point connectivity uh, for Wi-Fi, then we receive, uh, for example, this is the mobile phone and uh, we turn on the Wi-Fi or the mobile signal, we turn it on. And now we have a list of access points available. For example, this is AP1, this is AP2, this is AP3, and this is AP4. And uh, this is totally based on the signal strength. For example, it has a high signal strength. Then onward after that, we have uh, this one with a bit lower signal strength. And then onward, uh, we have this one with uh, more lower signal strength. And at the end, we have the, the you can say the weakest with the, this is the weaker, weakest signal strength. This is the stronger, this is strong or medium, you can say, this is the medium and this is weak. So we, we actually select the uh, access point one based on the signal strength. And uh, one important thing, that the operating system by itself also categorize these access point based on the signal strength. Uh, look at this, it is mentioned first, then second, then third, and then fourth. It is not necessary that we always connect to the access point with high signal strength. Sometimes the signal strength of uh, an access point is higher, but we don't have the required credentials. So in that case, when we don't have the required login details, login and password information, then we will connect to the weaker access point. Uh, Sometimes there is possibility of connectivity with the medium access point. So this is very important. And you can see here in this diagram that we can also have opportunity to connect with multiple uh, based on our option, beacon frames from access point and then associate request from host is also sent and the association request. The, so I think this is enough for this today's class and uh, in next class, 
uh, we will start from this active and uh, passive scanning. Uh, so if you have any question, uh, we can discuss it uh, or you can write me an email about this and uh, I will reply back. Uh, we can also have a meeting after uh, or two lectures and you may kindly uh, write down your question and then we will discuss it. So thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you.